Okay, hi. In this video, I'd like to cover um, directions in hexagonal systems and reinforce that with a few example problems. So first of all, how are we going to approach directions in hexagonal systems? We're going to start with a sort of a temporary three-axis system where we uh, imagine that our um, A1, A2, Z parallelopiped was actually uh, orthogonal. Okay, so what I mean by that is we've got here our A1 axis, A1, we've got A2 going off into the back there, and we've got Z, of course, coming up straight out of the middle there. And if you, um, you know, just look at the A1, A2, and, and Z axes as if they were orthogonal, that is, as if they were forming a little cube where... A1 or X is, is out there coming out of the page. Uh, A2 or Y is off to the right and Z is up. Um, we're going to be able to proceed nicely and come up with, you know, without very much difficulty, uh, notation in three-axis system. We're going to call that, though, um, a temporary set of indices. U prime, V prime, and W prime. U, V, and W are just sort of placeholders that we use, or variables that we use to describe the, the indices for a direction vector. Um, because they're temporary, we're just going to prime them. Um, so this is a kind of an extra step, and this is really, I think, that kind of the, the most challenging part of working with direction in, in, in hexagonal. Um, beyond that, it's actually fairly straightforward. We just um, have to uh, do a little bit of simple um, simple math there, and then <clears throat> um, convert that and put it in enclosures. There's nothing really more to it. So the hard part is that initial visualization, and then a little bit of simple uh, simple math, and then we're done. So let's look at an example problem. So how are we going to picture that within the, the A1, A2, Z parallelopiped? Well, the easiest thing we could do is we could just translate it over so that it originates from our conventional origin. And we can see that the end of the vector actually resides directly over the top of the A3 axis. That is, if we move it over by one lattice parameter along the positive A3 direction, it will originate in our conventional origin and terminate here um, at that uh, sort of right-hand uh, uppermost corner of the unit cell. And, and then it becomes a little bit easier to see. And if I draw the rest of the parallelopiped here, it'll be even more obvious um, what I mean by uh, picturing this in um, as if it was in a cube, okay? So you can see what I'm trying to shade in here in this bright yellow color is this little um, A1, A2, Z parallel pipette. We can imagine that as if it was X, Y, and Z, where you know A1 is, is X and A2 is Y, so we've got a vector that originates there at that conventional origin and travels out towards the top rightmost uh, front uh, corner, this corner here. So, of course, we recognize that right away. If this is the origin, 0, 0, uh, 0, well, then it terminates uh, with point coordinates of 1, 1, and 1, meaning that that is, in fact, a 1, 1, 1 vector. So if u prime equals 1, v prime equals 1, and w prime equals 1, we can easily convert to u prime, uh, u, v, uh, t, and w. So u is just uh, going to be 1 third times 2 times 1 minus 1, uh, which is just equal to uh, 1 third. v is 1 third, again, times 2 uh, minus 1 there, which is another 1 third. Now remember, t is, um, is u plus V, all made positive, or all made negative, rather, so it's actually negative uh, two-thirds, and W is just W prime, which is just one. Uh, we're almost done now. We've just got that irritating uh, three in the denominator there, so we want to clear that out, so we're going to multiply across by three, and so our enclosure is going to be one, one, uh, two bar, three. We've multiplied by three, and that's the answer for that vector there. Let's take a look at this one. It originates down here and travels sort of backwards across the hexagonal unit cell that way. So how are we going to picture that? Well, what we could do with this is, again, we could translate it over 
so that it originates at our conventional origin. And you'll see that, in, again, this one actually um, travels entirely over the A2 axis. That is, it has no component in the A1 axis. Um, so if I draw this over here, it's going to go like that, and it's going to exit the unit cell halfway up in the Z direction there. <clears throat> So, you know, try drawing this for yourself if you don't see it immediately. Uh, but in our X, Y, and Z uh, system, again, where A1 is, um, is X, A2 is, is Y, you know, if we were imagining it as orthogonal, it would originate at the origin there. And it would travel along the Y axis and rise up by half in the Z, so it would exit the unit cell there. So that is, if this is our origin right here, 0, 0, 0, the point coordinates um, of the, at the end of the vector uh, would be 0 in the X, 1 in the Y, and 1 half in the Z. Uh, so that would mean that this vector is the, um, we're multiplied by 2, the 0, 2, 1 vector. All right, so then and that's u prime, v prime, and w prime. Therefore, u is just equal to one third times two times zero minus two, <clears throat> which equals negative two thirds. V, um, correct, and that's meant to be a v, is one third of two times two minus zero, which equals <clears throat> four thirds. T, again, is the sum of U and V, all made negative. So 4 thirds minus 2 thirds is equal to uh, 2 thirds. And that's all made negative, so that's negative 2 thirds. And W is just W prime, which is 1. So we're almost done now. Again, we just got that pesky 3 in the denominator. So we'll multiply across by 3, and we'll come up with 2 bar 4, 2 bar Three. Okay, whoops. All right, that's a square bracket there. All right, little, that was challenging, but uh, we got to it. Let's take a look at this one. Um, so this one is actually fairly difficult to see at first. Um, I think the easiest way to picture this is to, in fact, let's just say, let's just define this as our origin. And so what I could do is I could draw, well, that would be positive x, right? And I'm going to just highlight for you um, our parallelopiped that we would be forming with that as our origin, with that bottom uh, leftmost corner there. So I'm starting to draw this in as best I can here. Hopefully you can start to see it. Okay, there we go. So this parallelopiped that I've shaded in <coughs> is where we've defined our, essentially, you know, our, our, our x, y, and uh, z axes. That's a1, a2, and, uh, and z. And you can hopefully see that, in fact, that vector is actually crossing out of the unit cell right in the middle of that face there. So if I draw this in a cube to allow us to get right into working out the um, three-axis uh, notation, we would have our vector like this that originates at the conventional origin and travels out along the um, positive A1, positive A2 space and travels up by half the lattice parameter. So it actually is going to exit on this front face here, same face I shaded in over here, and exits the unit cell right there. So our vector is going to look sort of like this. So if this was our origin, where it originated, that means the head of the vector has point coordinates of 1 in the x, 1 half in the y, and 1 half in the z, which means that our temporary 3-axis um, notation is going to be uh, 2, 1, 1. Okay, so again, that's u prime, v prime, w prime, and so u you know, just becomes one third times two times two minus one, 
which is equal to uh, 4 minus 1, uh, 3, so that's equal to 1. In fact, V is just equal to 1 third, 2 minus 2, which is 0. Uh, T is the sum of those two, all made negative, so that's negative 1. And uh, W is just W prime, which is 1. Um, <clears throat> so there's no uh, reductions necessary. That's already lowest integer values. So our four index notation becomes 1, 0, 1 bar, 1. And that's our, uh, that's our answer. I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you.